Hi, welcome aboard. Today we're going to go through the installation of our D400 wind generator. In our last video we went through an unboxing of the D400 wind generator. That was a week ago and at the time we were in Stornoway, Scotland. Since then we found a perfect weather window to sail 285 nautical miles northward to the Faroe Islands where we're now docked on a big pier wall covered with tires in the town of Vestmana. In just a few short days, we're going to push off again to sail 1,300 nautical miles to Longyearbyen Svalbard. I'm really looking forward to using our D400 wind generator and our solar panels to generate our electricity during the two to three week long offshore passage. So let's just jump into it. This is a stainless steel Schedule 40 pipe that I had custom made to mount wind generators. I ended up installing an Iridium Go satellite dome at the top of this one on the port side. It has a clear unobstructed view of the sky. And we're going to install the D400 wind generator on the other one on the starboard side right now. Okay, we're on the aft deck now, and I'm going to point the camera up to the pipe on the starboard side. As you can see, there are these two wires coming out of the top. These wires are going to be hooked up to the D400. The D400 will send electricity down these wires to the regulator, as we'll see down below. But first, let's get that D400 assembled and mount it at the top of that post. Here's the wind generator body, the tail assembly, the blades, here's the nose cone, the white powder coated hub plate, and the stainless steel hub plate. Bolts, nuts, and washers for assembling the tail to the wind generator body, the rotor hub spacer, seven bolts, nuts, and washers, an aluminum ring, button head screws, and shake-proof washers. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we'll do is assemble the propeller. The five blades just fit into each other like this. Three, four, five. The blades must be installed so that this label is on the same side as the nose cone facing the wind. So this side faces into the wind. The nose cone goes here. The other side actually has this groove here that the aluminum ring goes in. So that part goes towards the wind generator body. Next we'll attach the rotor hub spacer to the white powder coated hub plate with two of the bolts and two of the washers. Washer on the bolt and put it through one of the two small holes in the center and the other one as well, like so. And then place the rotor hub spacer over the whole thing. Like that. One important thing to note is that there are two holes in the shaft of the wind generator body. Those two holes have to line up with these two holes that are in the rotor hub spacer. And once you start putting it on there, it's very hard to adjust it. So you have to line it up first before you slide it on there. Like that. Did I get it? Yes. Next, we're going to put these two button head screws into the holes in the rotor hub spacer and screw them into the threaded holes in the shaft. One goes in on one side and the other goes in on the other side. And you have to put thread lock on them first. And also the shake proof lock washer. There's one.
Okay. Now we'll put the propeller onto the wind generator body. Take the aluminum ring, which has a rounded side and a flat side, and you take the rounded side and you put it into the groove in the propeller. Like that. And then you put the propeller onto the rotor hub spacer with that aluminum ring facing the wind generator body. Next, we're going to put the remaining five bolts with washers into the white powder coated hub plate and the propeller assembly. You have to sort of wiggle the white powder coated hub plate to get those holes to match with the holes that are in the propeller assembly. And I've done that. So now I'm going to put the first bolt in there, just like that. Now I was having a little problem with the bolts sliding back down after I put them in there. So just to make sure that none of them falls back down, I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on the underside just to keep it up there. All right, that's one, two, three, four, and five. Next, we're going to put the stainless steel plate over the whole thing. Holes match up. Again, I've got tape on the underside just to keep the bolts up. Next, we're going to put the washers and nylock nuts over each of the seven bolts. You have to have two wrenches for this because you need to have a wrench on the underside on the bolt head to hold it so it doesn't spin as you're tightening the nut. Next, we're going to turn the D400 over and attach the tail assembly. You have to be pretty careful with this because it's, it's very heavy and the blades are quite delicate. The tail assembly attaches to the left side of, uh, I don't, I don't have enough height in the cabin to attach the tail assembly. I'm going to have to take it outside. Now we'll install the tail assembly. There are three holes in the aft edge of the wind generator body, which match up with the three holes on the tail assembly. Send in a Phillips head bolt with the washer on it. And then this black rubber washer, a larger metal washer, and then the nylock nut. Ta-da! Hey everybody, welcome aboard. Today we're going to wire the D400 to the regulator and mount it at the top of that post. So let's just jump into it. The wires from the D400 are much smaller than the larger wires that we're going to use to carry electricity to the regulator, these wires need to be larger in order to avoid voltage drop and to deliver maximum charging power to the batteries. 
we're going to connect the two together using this block connector. But first, we need to put the tower liner on the D400. We're gonna put the cables through it. And before we do that, we're gonna drill a hole in the bottom of the tower liner and screw in this eye. The eye will be used to support the weight of the larger cables inside that pole, as you'll see later. For now, let's just install it. Now that we've got that eye installed in the bottom of the tower liner, we'll attach it to the D400. Take the wires and send them down the tower liner through that hole in the bottom. Okay. And then slide it onto the yaw shaft. Now there's a groove right here in the yaw shaft and these Allen key bolts get tightened and they go into that groove to secure the tower liner onto the yaw shaft. Great. Now we'll use the block connector to attach the wires from the D400 to the wires that go into that pole and to the regulator. The block connector makes it easier to connect wires of different gauges together. You just tighten down on the wire. Cut off the insulation on the larger wire so that we can insert it into the block connector. Make sure that the polarity is correct with the black wire going to the black wire and the red wire going to the red wire. Okay, wow, it's connected. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna cover the block connector with self-amalgamating tape. And this will protect it from condensation. I think that looks pretty good. It's all sealed up. The wires that are going down the support post are pretty heavy, and so to relieve strain on the block connector, we're going to use wire ties and that eye that we screwed into the bottom of the tower liner. I'm gonna take a couple of long wire ties and just put them right there, like that, underneath the block connector, and then take another wire tie and secure them in place. Real tight, just like so. I'm gonna put another wire tie here, just in case. Okay. We're gonna use an additional wire ties to lengthen these ones enough so that they can reach the eye and then loop back to themselves. And then you just tighten this wire tie just enough so that it takes the strain off of the block connector. As you can see, if I pull this, the wire tie gets the strain and the block connector doesn't get any strain. I'm gonna add one more wire tie to double that up just for a little added security. Okay, that looks good. We'll snip the ends. Just 
super. It's ready to go in the pole now. Now for the hard part. This is actually a little scary and I'm not even sure if it's going to work. I'm going to put the D400 on my shoulder and try to climb up the stern arch and attach it to the top of the post. As I'm feeding the wire down into the post, Monique will be pulling the wire at the bottom so that it will go down. Ready? Ready. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh! It's a bit heavy. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, it's gonna catch you on the... Piece of cake. Why do you have to say that? Oh, come on. Alright. Watch out for the antenna. Now start pulling the wire down, Mo. You pull it down, I'll feed it in. Oh. Okay. It's in. Is it? Yep. We did it. <sighs> wow. I'm gonna go back up there and put the nose cone on. The nose cone attaches by turning it counterclockwise and pushing it onto the D400. There's one more thing that we have to do. The last step is to secure the tower liner in the support post. I'm going to do that by drilling a four millimeter hole in the support post and into the tower liner to a depth of 12 millimeters. And then I'm going to tap threads in it to put this Allen key bolt in there. I'm going to do one on each side. This drill bit's made for stainless steel. It's really strong. Hopefully it'll do the job. And that should do it. Now I'm gonna use this tap to make threads in the stainless steel support tube and into the tower liner so that we can insert that allen key bolt here we go i've also got some of this drilling and machining lubricant for when i tap that hole now that i've got that hole tapped i'm going to put in the allen key bolt Perfect. That's not going anywhere. In our next video, we'll go over how we installed the components of the D400 down below. See you next week.